the equatorial spitting cobra. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. I wonder where that frog is going. Let's follow it too. Careful, Hero. You'll scare the frog away. Huh? Something else is hidden inside the bush? Huh? A snake! Better keep a distance, Hero. It's a snake in our garden. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Yikes! Katie, where are you? We found a snake in the garden. Hi, Leo. Oh, wow. It seems to be some kind of cobra. You can tell by the flap of skin that spread out near its head. A cobra? Can you find more information about it? Leave it to me. Great. I'm coming up. Hero, you stay here and keep your distance from the snake, okay? I'll be right back. <coughs> Come on, everybody. Let's go into the treehouse. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The cobra you found is an equatorial spitting cobra, also known as a black spitting cobra. It is called a spitting cobra because it is able to shoot venom from its fangs. Venom is a toxin, like poison, and is found in some animals such as cobras. Venom can be passed to a person or another animal through a bite or sting. Many cobras defend themselves by injecting venom through their bite, but a spitting cobra prefers to spit or spray venom at a predator's eyes to scare them away. The spitting cobra wiggles its head the same way your eyes move. This helps the cobra's aim when it sprays its venom. That's scary! Actually, spitting cobras are shy animals. They only attack when they feel threatened. Still, equatorial spitting cobras can shoot venom up to three meters away. So it's best to keep your distance. I'll make sure to remember that, Katie. Equatorial spitting cobras live in different forests in Southeast Asia, where they eat small animals like lizards, frogs, and rats. Hmm. I don't think it's safe for us to be near the spitting cobra. We should return the cobra to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn One, two, off we go For lots of fun and lots to learn Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers Ah, I see you've brought a special friend with you today Here, you'll need these if you're going to be near that spitting cobra Glasses? Safety glasses, Leo the venom from spitting cobras can harm your eyes. That's why it's very important to wear these glasses for protection. When threatened, the spitting cobra will aim to shoot its venom at an enemy's eyes. The venom that the spitting cobra sprays causes pain to the eyes and sometimes blindness. You will know when you've gotten too close to a cobra when it flares the flap of skin around its head and neck. This flap of skin is called a hood. A cobra will spread its hood when it feels threatened. I see. We'll be careful not to get too close to the cobra. We're trying to find the spitting cobra's home. Do you know where we should look? 
Spitting cobras like to live near water, in burrows or under rocks, where they can hunt for food. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Ranger Rocky. Let's see what we can find. Here is an open field with some trees. And on this side are rocks and trees near a stream. Do you know where we should go? Over there is an open field with some trees. And over there are rocks and trees near a stream. So where should we go? There? That's right! We need to go to the place near a stream because spitting cobras can hunt for food near water. Let's go! What's wrong with the cobra? The spitting cobra is getting into a defensive pose. Why does it keep flicking its tongue? Spitting cobras have a very good sense of smell. They use their tongues to pick up scents in the air. Do you think it might have picked up the scent of a predator? <laughs> they don't look very friendly. They are mongooses. It says here that the mongoose is the cobra's natural predator. Did you see that? The cobra sprayed venom at that mongoose, but the mongoose looks fine. It says here the mongoose is resistant or immune to cobra venom. That means cobra venom has no effect on the mongoose. What do we do now? We're surrounded. I'll clear a path for us. Thanks, Katie. Hold on tight, everyone. Phew, that was close. What should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. If you want to find the spitting cobra's home, just look for a hole near a stream. Not for a red laser beam or a bucket of ice cream, but look for a hole near a stream. I see. So not for a red laser beam or a bucket of ice cream, but, but look, look for, for a hole near, near a, stream. a stream. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. OK, Hero, to find the spitting cobra's home, you have to look for a hole near a stream. Good luck! <laughs> Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be the spitting cobra's home. Could this be the spitting cobra's home? Hmm, this hole already belongs to an owl. Carry on, Hero. Is this log the spitting cobra's home? No, another animal lives inside. Let's continue. What's this? There's a stream, and there's an empty hole under a rock. This seems like a good home for the cobra. Great work, Hero. We're coming over. Goodbye, little friend. We did it! We found the Spitting Cobra's home! Great job, everyone! Hooray! Yay! We found an equatorial Spitting Cobra in our garden! We learned that the spitting cobra can spray venom when threatened. That's why it's best to keep a safe distance from the spitting cobra. So we went to the forest and brought it to its natural home, far away from other humans. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Mission accomplished. The Malayan Tiger. Hero, where are you, Hero? <coughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. You're just in time, Hero. 
Let's see who's stronger. I challenge you to a game of tug of war. <laughs> you take this end of the rope, and I'll take this end. The first one to pull the flag past their line wins. Ready, hero? And go! Not bad, hero, but I'm not gonna lose. <gasps> what? Ow! <laughs> What are you? Are you some kind of cat? Those are some beautiful stripes on its fur. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hold still, kitty. Katie, are you there? We found a striped cat in the garden. That's not a cat, Leo. That's a tiger cub. Wow, a tiger cub? Can you find more information about it? Of course. Leave it to me. Great. I'm coming up. Hero, you stay here with our new friend. I'll be back soon. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Let's go into the treehouse. Hi, Katie. Did you find more information about the cub? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The cub you found is a Malayan tiger. A Malayan tiger? Does that mean it comes from Malaysia? That's right. To be specific, Malayan tigers come from the forests of the Malayan Peninsula in Southeast Asia. But they can also be found in Southern Thailand. I see. So what do Malayan tigers eat? Like all tigers, Malayan tigers are meat eaters. They usually feed on deer, wild boar, and sun bears. But when there isn't enough food, Malayan tigers sometimes attack people and farm animals. Because of this, many tigers are illegally hunted by people. Tigers are also hunted for their body parts, like their skin. This illegal hunting is the reason why Malayan tigers are critically endangered. That means Malayan tigers are very in danger of disappearing forever. There are only about 250 Malayan tigers left in the wild. Oh no! We should protect Malayan tigers so they'll still be around in the future. You're right, Leo. But a tiger cub needs to be with its mother so it can learn how to hunt and get milk to grow. Only its mother can protect the tiger cub. Then let's bring the tiger cub back to its mother. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn One, two, off we go For lots of fun and lots to learn Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers Ah, I see you've brought a Malayan tiger cub Yes, Ranger Rocky We're here to bring the tiger cub back to its mother That's great, Leo But you must be careful not to get close to adult tigers they might mistake you for prey and attack. Oh, dear. We'll be super careful, Ranger Rocky. What else should we know about Malayan tigers? A mother Malayan tiger usually has one to five cubs. These cubs stay with her for a year and a half before leaving to find their own home. During the time with their mother, the cubs will learn how to hunt and stalk prey. If you want to find the cub's mother, you should keep a lookout for places with tall grass. Tigers prefer to live in tall grass, where they can hide from predators and ambush their prey. Good luck and stay safe, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Let's see what we can find. Here are some trees with a lot of tall grass. And on this side is a place with trees and short grass. Do you know where we should go? 
Over there are trees with tall grass, and over there is a place with trees and short grass. So where should we go? There, that's right. We need to go to the place with trees and tall grass because Malayan tigers prefer to live in tall grass where they can hide and hunt for prey. Let's go. We're here. Hmm. I don't think it's safe for us to look for the cub's mother in the tall grass. We won't be able to see her coming. What if we look for the cub's mother from up there? Good idea, Katie. Come on, everybody. Let's fly. Tiger cub. Oh no! The tiger cub jumped into the tall grass. We have to find it. Where did the cub go? Leo, could the tiger cub be in there? Or maybe it's over there. The tiger cub might be in one of the grass patches, but we can't go into the grass to check. There might be predators in there. Hey, I've got an idea. I'll use this. Great idea, Leo. Let me try it. Tiger cub. I got you, little one. What should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. If you want to find the tiger cub's mother, just look for orange and black stripes, not for bagpipes or for baby wipes, but look for orange and black stripes. I see. So not for bagpipes or for baby wipes, but, but look, look for, for orange, orange and black stripes. stripes. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, hero, to find the tiger cub's mother, you have to look for orange and black stripes. Good luck. Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be the tiger cub's mother. Is that the tiger cub's mother? This animal has spots on its fur. It's a leopard. We need to find orange and black stripes. Let's move on. What's this? Those are stripes, but it's not a tiger. This is the squirrel from earlier. Let's keep looking. Could that be the cub's mother? This animal has orange and black stripes on its fur. It's the tiger cub's mother. Good work, hero. We're coming over. We did it. We found the tiger cub's mother. Great job, everyone. Hooray! Yay! a Malayan tiger cub in our garden. We learned that Malayan tigers are endangered and that tiger cubs need their mother to be protected. So we went to the forest and brought the tiger cub back home to its mother. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Mission accomplished. The Clouded Leopard. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Oh, this? This is a windsock for our garden. We can use it to see the speed and direction of the wind. See? Now I just need to find a good place to hang it. Why don't we look for it together? Let's go. I see a good spot up ahead. Let's try to hang it there. Huh? Hey, that's my windsock. 
I think it's some kind of cat. And look at those spots on its fur. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hold still, little cat. Katie, are you there? We found a spotted cat in the garden that can climb trees really well. Hi, Leo. I've received the photo. That sure is a nice looking cat. Can you find more information about it? Leave it to me. Great, and coming up. Hero, you stay here with our new friend. I'll be right back. <coughs> Come on, everybody. Let's go into the tree house. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything about the cat? Hi, Leo. It seems that the cat you found is a clouded leopard. It's a cub, which means that it's still a baby. A clouded leopard cub? The clouded leopard gets its name from the special cloud-like spots on its fur. These spots serve as camouflage so they can hide in the trees. I see. We saw it can climb trees very well. Clouded leopards are arboreal animals which means they mostly live in trees. That's why they have large paws and sharp claws that help them climb. I see. Their flexible short legs and long tail help them balance in the trees. Clouded leopards are one of the best tree climbers of all the big cats. That's amazing. What kind of food do they eat? Clouded leopards are carnivores. This means they eat other animals like birds, deer, and pigs. Clouded leopards live in different countries in Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. I think we should return the cub to its mother since it still needs to learn how to hunt. Come and join us. Great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Ranger Rocky. Welcome to the rainforest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a rare friend with you today. Why is it rare, Ranger Rocky? Clouded leopards are rare because not many of them are left in the wild, and they are in danger of disappearing forever. That's terrible. Why are they in danger of disappearing forever? They are endangered because their homes in the forest are cut down for human use. They are also hunted for their patterned fur. You should look for the cub's mother. She can keep it safe. Look for tall trees with lots of shade. That's where the clouded leopard hides. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Let's see what we can find. Here are some short trees. And on this side, are a lot of tall trees with leaves and shade. Do you know where we should go? Over there are some short trees. And over there are a lot of tall trees with shade. So where should we go? There? That's right! We need to go to a place with lots of tall trees with shade because clouded leopards prefer to hide in them. Let's go! It looks like we have to cross the river to get to those trees. Look at those water lilies. They are so big. The jeep won't go any further. They are blocking the way. The cub is going after that butterfly. We have to catch up before it gets lost. But how can we move forward? Look, Leo. 
up by those trees. The cub! We have to save it, but we can't get there. This should work. Let's go! Great idea, Katie. Let's save the cub. What to do? I'll take this. Great, Leo. Just in time. What should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. If you want to find the clouded leopard's mother, just look for rustling leaves. Not for naughty thieves or buzzing bees, but look for rustling leaves. I see. So not for naughty thieves or buzzing bees, but, but look, look for, for rustling, rustling leaves. leaves. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find the mother of the clouded leopard cub, you have to look for rustling leaves. Good luck. Okay, Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be its mother. Did you hear that? Could it be the cub's mother? Hmm, this animal has stripes on its fur. It's a tiger. Let's continue. Did you hear some rustling leaves? Can it be the cub's mother? Yikes, that's a snake. Better keep looking. Is that the cub's mother? It has the same cloud-like spots. It must be the clouded leopard's mother. Great work, Hero. We're coming over. We did it. We found the clouded leopard's mother. Great work, everyone. Yay! We found a clouded leopard cub in our garden. We learned that the clouded leopard is an endangered species and that it spends most of its time in trees. So we went to the rainforest and brought it back home to its mother. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Thank you.